SpaceX gears up for its massive rocket test after recovering from a mishap in just weeks. Starship is SpaceX's 394-foot-tall rocket that is central to the firm's plans to not only conduct crewed and uncrewed flights to Mars, but also rapidly build out its Starlink satellite internet constellation. The company is currently building prototypes of the rocket in its facilities in Boca Chica, Texas, and at this front, it's Booster 7 that is thought to be the first of its kind to be ready to conduct an orbital test flight. However, this rocket was the centerpiece of a surprising test accident in July when a fire erupted at its base due to improper conditions. A few weeks after the fireball, SpaceX finally inspected the booster and shipped it back to the launch site. And now SpaceX is gearing up to conduct a bunch of tests on B7. The booster itself stands at 230 feet tall and is responsible for lifting the rocket from the Earth's surface to orbit. For this purpose, it is powered by 33 Raptor 2 engines, and these engines are the reason it took SpaceX roughly three weeks to transport it back and to the launch pad after the July accident. Since then, footage from diligent journalists providing round-the-clock coverage from Boca Chica has suggested that SpaceX removed the booster's engines and then installed them after inspection. However, it's unclear how many or if any engines were damaged due to the fireball that generated shockwaves and whether the company has installed new engines on the rocket instead. And now, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk has confirmed via Twitter that his company has finished inspecting the booster and has shipped it back to the launch site. Musk provided live updates as his company rolled the rocket out from its testing and assembly facilities to the launch site, with the process taking roughly five hours. Just a few short hours after arriving at the pad, SpaceX was prepared to lift B-7. However, a major hydraulic failure on Mechazilla delayed operations. Afterward, Musk reacted via Twitter saying, I love the smell of hydraulic fluid in the morning. SpaceX then changed its plans. B-7 was lifted onto the orbital launch mount by SpaceX's crane, the Lieber LR-11000, aka Marvin, instead of the chopstick arms. This amazing live coverage is courtesy of Lab Padre. Taking a look at close-up photos captured by Starship Gazer, we can see clearly that SpaceX's team removed 13 Raptors, and now this prototype has only 20 of the 33 Raptor engines installed. Additionally, the CEO also shared that SpaceX might test the booster again and soon. As Musk outlines, SpaceX only tests the outer ring of 20 engines, not all. Despite that, the nature of this test is uncertain, and it can, in all likelihood, involve the company testing the Raptor engine's pumps. These pumps were also tested at the time of the accident, but while B-7 failed to make the cut, SpaceX's upper stage, Starship, that underwent the same test soon after the prior failure, saw all the pumps performing to the mark, with a live feed from the test site showing clouds of gas flowing from below the rocket. SpaceX has requested permission for road closures, each a potential 12-hour test window on August 8th, 9th, and the 10th. A crucial and exciting event for B-7 will be its static fire test, which might see SpaceX fire all of the 33 rocket engines in one go in order to validate Starship's myriad of propulsion and other systems. The testing stands use a water deluge system to divert the heat and sound away from the base and SpaceX also tested this system for its suborbital pad B earlier this month. Instead of the launch pad, static fire tests are conducted on the suborbital pads. Besides testing B-7, SpaceX is also working towards a static fire test on Ship 24, Starship's prototype second stage. Additionally, the company is also rapidly manufacturing as well as assembling the next prototypes. Recently, both Ship 26's common dome section and Ship 28's thrust section flipped. These detailed photos are courtesy of Starship Gazer. Interestingly enough, as SpaceX made progress on returning B-7 to the pad, Musk also became more forthcoming with his estimates for a test flight. 
He believes that a successful orbital test flight can take place over the next 12 months, and during a podcast earlier this month, he also outlined that the first orbital test flight will take place anytime over the next two months. We've not done any orbital Starship launches. We hope to, to attempt a, an orbital launch uh, in a month or two. So it depends on how the testing goes. Just how many rockets SpaceX plans to launch for its orbital test plans are uncertain, and the figure depends primarily on engine production. Every failure will end up costing SpaceX dozens of these engines and at a considerably faster pace at which it can manufacture them. With SpaceX moving full steam ahead with Starship testing, NASA plans to launch its own moon rocket at the end of this month and officially kick off the Artemis program, which aims to develop a sustained human presence on the moon by partnering up with SpaceX and Starship. The Artemis 1 stack will make the roughly 6.4 kilometer journey from Kennedy Space Center's Vehicle Assembly Building to Launch Complex 39B on the 18th of August. The rollout will keep Artemis 1 on track to launch on a weeks-long, uncrewed journey around the moon no earlier than the 29th of August. Artemis 1 will put the Space Launch System Mega Rocket and Orion spacecraft through their paces to ensure reliability ahead of astronauts taking a similar ride a few years from now, some making it all the way to the lunar surface if NASA's plans come to fruition. The coming launch follows intense system certifications and more than a decade of planning. Our teams have been working extremely hard for a very, very long time to get to this point. Rick Labrode, lead Artemis One flight director at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, said in a live-streamed briefing on Friday. The mission, he added, is very special. We're extremely excited. Artemis 1 will mark the first ever launch for the SLS and just the second for Orion, which went to Earth orbit back in 2014. If all goes according to plan, on August 29th, the SLS will roar through the atmosphere to achieve orbit in just eight and a half minutes. The huge rocket's upper stage will then deploy Orion into a translunar injection orbit about 80 to 90 minutes after liftoff. Those milestones will kick off an action-packed 42 days in space for Orion, assuming liftoff occurs on August 29th. There's really no time to catch our breath. We really hit the ground running, said Judd Frayling, Artemis One Ascent and Entry Flight Director at JSC. And with that, my time is up. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.